Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai. Uh, today I am going to talk about a rather obscure but nevertheless an important topic, anaerobic infections and their relevance to dermatologists. Millions and millions of years ago on this planet Earth, there existed total darkness in an atmosphere of hydrogen, ammonia, carbon dioxide and methane. And only the primitive organisms called anaerobes existed. Much later, light from the sun reached the earth. Photosynthesis started with generation of oxygen to support the present biosphere. Anaerobes continued to remain the predominant bacteria, even in well oxygenated man. The two main anaerobes we will consider today are the gram-negative bacilli called Bacteroides and the spirochetes, labeled Borrelia. Since Pasteur described anaerobes in 1861, interest in these organisms has been sporadic. In 1896, Vincent described a condition associated with anaerobes inside the mouth, which we still call Vincent's angina. When anaerobes are confined to their normal human habitat, they are benign participants in a rich microbial ecology that is generally protective though occasionally destructive. In order to effectively manage anaerobic infections, chloramphenicol, lincomycin and clindamycin were found useful but they have a lot of serious side effects. They do not cross the blood-brain barrier and they are expensive. On the other hand, metronidazole, which had been used for many decades for treating genital trichomoniasis, amoebiasis, and giardiasis, it is uniformly bactericidal for all anaerobic organisms. But all aerobes are resistant to metronidazole. This drug can also penetrate the blood brain barrier and it rapidly reaches therapeutic concentrations in most body fluids and abscess cavities. It is inexpensive and is compatible with most antibiotics. In 1962, D.L.S. Shin made a serendipitous discovery. He was treating a patient for severe ulcerative gingivitis, so-called Vincent's angina. The patient also had vaginal trichomoniasis, for which a gynecologist started metronidazole. At the end of a week, both conditions were cured. Vincent's is a well-known anaerobic infection. There are a few clinical criteria which would make us suspect an anaerobic infection. Firstly, the foul odor. This is thought to be due to N-butyric acid produced by the anaerobes. Secondly, infections in the proximity of mucosal surfaces should raise the suspicion of anaerobic infections. And these infections have a tendency to produce profuse amount of pus. And lastly, tissue ischemia and necrosis. These are a few point signs which should evoke the suspicion of an anaerobic infection. Since it is difficult to culture anaerobes which need special media, a few simpler tests can be done to start with. A simple grams stain of smears taken from discharges or ulcers, they will show the bacteroides as long, slender, gram-negative, pleomorphic bacilli with the tapering ends, so they are called fusiform bacteria. The Borrelia are best seen under dark field microscope, just as we look for Trypanema pallidum of syphilis. Now with this brief preamble, I would like to present two clinical scenarios in dermatological practice where anaerobes play a predominant role and where metronidazole gives prompt relief. In the 1970s, Following torrential rains in the city of Madras, now called Chennai, there was flooding of the rivers with washing away of the low-lying slums. It was a week or so before the waters receded. About a month later, we started seeing at the Government General Hospital, Chennai, which is meant for poor patients, a free hospital, we saw a lot of patients coming with leg ulcers and most of them were from the slum areas which had been washed off. 
And uh, at least three or four patients a day we saw in the GH. And some of them possibly went to the surgical outpatients. We saw them and we labeled it as tropical ulcers. And the history was so following trivial trauma, these ulcers appeared, usually on the lower third of the leg. They quickly enlarged in diameter and in depth. They were extremely painful and accompanied by a very foul smelling serosanguinous discharge, causing a lot of distress to the patients and to other family members. The discharge we sent it for culture to the microbiology department and a plethora of organisms were grown in different patients E. coli, Proteus, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Staphylococcus and so on. In other words, there was no fixed pattern. There was poor response to the antibiotics then available, erythromycin and tetracycline. On the other hand, a few patients who were admitted to the wards because the ulcers were very large and painful were given intramuscular penicillin and they responded well. At this point, I was convinced that the aerobic bacteria cultured from the ulcers were probably only uh, contaminants, not the causative pathogens. So I took smears from each and every one of these ulcers, did a gram stain, and every case I was able to find out the bacteroides. And similarly, I took a drop of the discharge, put it on a glass slide, a cover slip, and took it to the neighboring STD department, very near the skin department, and put it under the dark field microscope. And again, in every case, I was able to see the spirochete, the Borrelia with its wide loops, unlike Tripanema pendulum, which has got very tight coils. At this point, I was convinced that tropical ulcer was predominantly an anaerobic infection with the various aerobes reported in the culture being merely contaminants. To test my hypothesis, I gave these patients only metronidazole 400 milligrams three times a day. Within two days, the discharge reduced and the pain was relieved considerably in every single case. We published our findings in the International Journal of Dermatology in 1979. A few months later, Dr. Robinson of uh, Trop uh, Liverpool Tropical School, he phoned me and said he was interested in ulcers, leg ulcers, could he come down to Chennai. I told him that the epidemic is already over, but anyway, he's welcome to come and see. So he landed here, he visited various Chennai city hospitals. He also went to Karagiri in Vellore. And he managed to get about a dozen cases of tropical ulcers. He biopsied these cases and collected blood uh, samples from each one of these. And he took it back to Liverpool. And with most sophisticated tests like electron microscopy and other serological tests, he clearly proved that tropical ulcers indeed are caused by the anaerobes and not by the aerobes. The second clinical scenario I came across, I read it in a recent article in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology, June 2020. We are all familiar with the nauseating foul odor which emanates from uh, fungating tumors of the skin. Not only does it cause distress to the patient but also to the co-patients in the ward and also to the caregivers. The authors of this paper powdered a tablet of metronidazole and sprinkled it on this tumor. They did not even touch it. And within 24 hours, the odor subsided and uh, the patients were relieved of the smell. No side effects were noted. The topical metronidazole gel or oral metronidazole did not help. The authors believe that the smell is caused by the anaerobes. Of course, it doesn't cure the condition, but it relieves one of the most predominant symptoms of these patients with fungating tumor. There is still ignorance, apathy, skepticism about the important role of anaerobes as pathogens. As a famous bacteriologist Maderio said, medicine and microbiology must synergize, lest once again the whole world becomes anaerobes.